Let's do the proper intro and then we can we right, can hit talk it then. It. We can talk it about is. it properly. I could have chosen six Radiohead tracks for mm. this mixtape, but that's just because I'm a bit of a fanboy right now. Mm. So I got the I got the synopsis through, blacked out like some FBI report. <laughs> Thing like yeah. blank is blanking blank and then blank <laughs> blank. Yep, yeah, great. I love it. Yeah, there's, love there's... it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anyone who knows anything about my music knows that I'm not a purist when it comes to sound. I'm definitely a finisher. I'm definitely a bash it out, get it done type of an artist. Yeah. I'm thinking thoughts like this is better than the original, which you should never think about, Joni Mitchell. Mitchell. You're struck yeah. down by the musical gods for even thinking that. Welcome to this week's mixtape show. Finn Greenall, thanks so much for coming on the show. Welcome, mate. It's a pleasure, man. Thanks for having me. Ah, no problem at all. So your new record's just come out, the Low Swing Sessions. It's one I've been enjoying and playing on the show a bit tonight. Just for anyone who's not familiar, just give us a bit of background on on low swing sessions, their sort of methods and, and what attracted you to, to that way of recording? Well, yeah, I mean, low swing is this record label here in Berlin and they're like specializing in like the, that audiophile market, which is a, a new word to me and a new market to me as well. But there are guys and girls out there that will spend 50 grand on an amp and 20 grand on a turntable. And, you know, the, instead of buying a car, they'll buy a set of speakers. Yeah. Uh, I imagine most of them are single, but this in this scene, they, they are all about purity. So the low swing records is a label that specializes in, in these, in this scene. So there's no computer, there's no, there's no tracking, there's no pro tools, there's nothing. It's all analog It's straight through the desk, straight to tape. And then the tape gets mastered at, at Abbey Road and cut at Air Studios. So it's all as, as literally as audio file as possible. With that in mind, it, it means that it's crazy expensive to make these records. And, and the cost is reflected in that. Yeah. But it's like I was, I was, I'm not, a t anyone who knows anything about my music knows that I'm not a purist when it comes to sound. I'm definitely a finisher. I'm definitely a bash it out, get it done type of an artist. Yeah. And that's why I've done so many records. You know, you got you have to park your perfectionism at the door if you want to finish a record, basically. And but on this one, there's a bass player on this called Tim Lefebvre, who I really love. And he's he was Bowie's bass player when, on the Black Star album. That's, oh, okay. and he's, yeah. also, he's also played bass yeah. for Tedeschi Truckers, mm -hmm. whole load of jazz guys. And me and Tim have been circling each other for years. Like we, we we're big fans of each other. Mm -hmm. He's seen me at some gigs. I've seen him at some gigs. And we just think we just, we just, there's a bromance going on. And, and so my friend Guy, who owns Low Swing Records, was like, dude, I reckon I can get Tim Lefevre and you in a room. All you got to do is pick a bunch of covers. Well, ori originally, Guy said, can you write eight new tracks? And I'm like, well, that's a new Fink album. So no, but I can do covers. We can, we can come up with some interesting covers. So, so we did. And, I guess the nice thing is that the low swing guys let me put two on Spotify, which is the first time, or and Apple and other streaming sites. That's the first time they've ever let anyone do that because it's digital, which is a dirty word. So like this, these are analog yeah, guys. Absolutely, yeah. So yeah, that's how it came about, and then and so it was a weekend of fun with a really hot session band and 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 straight to mm -hmm. tape, all live, no no overdubs, yeah. a few mm -hmm. BVs we recorded later, but that's it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all all, all legit, all live. Yeah. I was. I was buzzing first of all when I saw your post about like it, it coming to be and that you were going to be recording it, and then when I saw you, you posted a couple of Spotify links, I was already invested. I was already like, "I'm getting this record as soon as it comes out because I want to hear these because I know that Low Swing don't, you know, you're never going to get it on on the streaming platforms." So oh. I'm invested straight away. And when I saw that you'd put Modern Love, the Bowie cover, and the Soundgarden and Black Hole Sun, I was I was just blown away and i'll probably cut this out but <laughs> the, the day the day i heard modern love the day i broke up with my girlfriend and i was just oh, sitting there just like oh, I'm that's so it. sad yeah but it was it but that i buzz off that i love that Do you know what i mean it made me feel better yeah just playing it on repeat for like four hours just made me <laughs> so much better you know how it is but honestly mate incredible interpretation i mean we talk a lot on the mixtape about cover versions and what makes a good one and you know that kind of thing and bowie is one of those artists i think you if you're going to cover bowie you really got to bring it do you know what i mean and that the way yeah. you brought your own sound and to that track is is just incredible there's some there's some fantastic covers on there i've been listening to that little feet track since i was about oh, that was hard that yeah that was a hard one that yeah. track i really love that track 
yeah, and like I say, it's, it's the Smith track, which I played on the show tonight, what difference nice. does it make? Yeah, some, some incredible tracks on there. And even to my sort of tinnitus ravaged ears, I could hear <laughs> the quality in that recording. Do you know what I mean? It, like it's, I've got a $400 turntable and a, you know, a $300 set of speakers and a, and a $200 amp or whatever. And even I could hear the quality in that recording. It sounds so Man. good. I mean, yeah. you really can. I mean, there's something about that retro vibe and going through desk to tape. I mean, it's the most expensive way of recording imaginable, but you know, it's, I mean, you also have to be as a band, you know, you can't spend like, it's not like get back that Beatles documentary. You don't have, a month of tape you got like three tapes yeah, yeah so yeah. we got to get all eight tracks onto these onto these tapes and so you can't do 10 you you, you know we'll, we'll keep re-recording over it until you get it yeah. right it's not yeah, like we yeah, can right. save something or splice something it's, it was yeah. really intense but this is what really informed the covers that i chose to do because i needed to do i need to pick covers that were inside me so it's not necessarily my favorite tracks of all time it's just the tracks that like the modern love by david bowie and what difference does it make by the smiths i mean modern love is not is by far definitely not my favorite bowie track of course but it's just that because i was a kid when i when i was listening to this track it's just in my dna that track mm -hmm. so and same with that smith's track so um i needed to have something where i wasn't going to forget what the melody is or forget what the words are and i went through loads of 80s tracks to think okay Maybe I should do Nick Kershaw, or maybe I should do, you know, don't like, tease me with what could have been. Don't tease me. You with know, what all these, been. all these yeah. massive, <laughs> simple lines, or don't you forget about me, or something, something like that, where I, I, I know it, even though I d might not want to know it, I know it inside yeah. out. But, but yeah, uh, so, which is how we landed on Muddy Waters and mm. David Bowie on Modern Love and the Smiths. What difference does it make? And Soundgarden was actually Guy Sternberg, the producer's pick. He was like, dude, listen. I really want you to do this little feet track for personal reasons. And I'm like, okay, well, we'll, 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 we'll do that. And he was like, I really want you to do, I think you should, you could nail this Soundgarden track. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't really know. I've never been a big Soundgarden fan. Anyway, that's all changed now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's yeah. an amazing song. I can't wait to play it live. I'm, it's definitely going in the set. It's, it's, yeah. it's such a, it's such a great song and, and it plays itself. And you can like, I could just play that all weekend. It was such a delight. So, and then there was, a, we wanted did a couple of mine short sure. and then, yeah. We did, me and Tip, Tim Lefebvre's really into drum and bass and I'm really into drum and bass. Mm. And so we did a Ronnie Sy's kind of mashup, kind of cover, kind of yeah. think mash yeah. remix, which is yeah. kind of fun. Yeah, um, the first thing I thought of when I when I played that Q&A track was Ronnie Sy's. It was the first thing that came into my head. Yeah, yeah I played I played that on the show tonight. Yeah, wow. fantastic, <laughs> fantastic track. Yeah, really good one. I really enjoyed that. Really I mean, and that. it's live as well. So it, the mm. fact that it's live is is really is really it's just. I mean, it's almost easy for me to sing it. Mm. I mean, yeah. the drummer and the bass player Earl Harvin and Tim Lefevre, that was live, and it's like, yeah. wow, you guys wow. can just play that. That's crazy. That's unreal. So I was stepping into a room with some real big dogs. So I definitely, mm. I definitely wanted, I definitely wanted to bring my my a my mm. a covers game, and yeah. Yeah. I don't know how I fell into that modern love cover i mean the, the the chords are decided for you and and the song is mm. written for you but i think i was just well i remember i was doing a soundtrack for a computer for a video game and mm. and this this low swing session was looming and the deadline for this game was looming and i had to kind of like dude you need to like do something soon otherwise mm. it's gonna be gonna be a three chord trick blues record so you know what are you gonna do and yeah. i think that, that that little pattern that beautiful folky pattern just presented itself mm -hmm. to me similarly mm -hmm. for the other cover for the for the smith's cover it's a similar mm -hmm. vibe of like mm -hmm. this is a really nice riff i could this is this is giving me giving me vibes yeah so, but yeah that sound garden cover came out really banging i'm super super mm -hmm. chuffed with that yeah yeah and no, i was i was stoked with that as well and if you're listening to this on the podcast what i normally say is there'll be a link to tracks from, that we're talking about in the description. Obviously, for this case, there'll only be two. It'll only be the Soundgarden track and, uh, and the Bowie track because I can't, I can't include the actual music in the podcast. On the radio show, I'll drop the tracks in between, but on the podcast, I can't include the music because obviously it's licensed. So what I do is make up a Spotify playlist with all your mixtape choices as well. And then we drop that in the description and on the YouTube channel as well. So if you're listening, you can drop out and listen to that amazing Bowie cover as well i wanted to talk to you about covers as well i know we've covered it a bit already but you first came on my sort of radar a good long time ago a friend of my ex-wife's showed me your version of all cried out 
Oh, Love right. That, that slide bluesy sort of smooth version. It's incredible. And yeah, that, that, that sort of drew me into, you know, distance and time and, and those early records. Yeah. If only that's another heartbreaker, mate. I've been smashing that all week as well. I mean, that, that is, that's definitely that is a tune, mate. Yeah, oh, that one. Yeah, for sure. Mate, I mean, I wrote, that on a, I wrote that on a train and, you know, I wrote that on a train in, in a really heartbroken state. It took me 40 mm. minutes and, mm. you know, yeah, covers, man. I mean, this Alice and Moye cover is interesting because I was in a pub in Brighton where I lived at the time with an old, old friend of mine. And there was a, and it's one of those moments where you walk into a pub and you just want a quiet pint and it's a bloody pub quiz going down and you're <laughs> like, oh man, all the nights to come yeah. into this pub for a quiet one. It's a bloody yeah. pub quiz going on. Yeah. And, and it was a music round and it, he was, the, it, and he played the original and uh, something clicked to me that just went, actually, that's mm. pretty straight blues, that track, actually. Mm. I could probably cover that because it's, mm. it's a couple of chords and it's kind of got a blues un underlay to it. I reckon I could do it. Mm. And I did it and I got a lot of hate for it, funnily enough, from Alison Moye fans when I, when I dropped oh, it. Even though it, and a lot of people don't even know it's a cover, but I mean, the mm, ones that yeah, Alice yeah. fans were like, how can you, how dare you, you know, sully her name with such a trite cover and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, hey, listen, I'm just playing. I'm just singing songs mm. I don't yeah. to offend anyone. And, and then Alison Moye got involved. She stepped into the ring. She broke, she oh, broke true. cover. It's like, hey, come on, everybody. Look, actually, I quite like it. And yeah, she said yeah. that after... After like, that was a big hit for her, All Cried Out mm. in the 80s. Mm. And she sung mm. it a thousand times. And by mm. the end of it, she hated it. I yeah. never wanted to sing it again. I can totally yeah. relate to that. Yeah. And then um, and then she heard this cover because someone had sent it to her going like, don't you think this is awful, rah, rah. And she was like, oh, actually, That's I love awesome. it now. I love the song again because it's like, yeah. oh, right, I can hear it in a different mm. way. And mm. that made me, and that was at the very early part of my career. So it made me yeah. feel yeah. really lovely that. And, yeah, um, yeah. and at, at that point, first album back then, I think times have changed a lot now, but this was in 2005, 2005, six, it was like you're booked to play if, if you're doing well. And all of a sudden you're headlining your own shows, even if it's just 200 people or 300 people yeah. or something, your, your album's only 40 minutes long and you're booked for an hour. So what you can't play this, you can't play yeah, it twice. Exactly right. So, yeah, 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 yeah. And, and I, and this is where the punks come in because the punk albums are only like 28 minutes long and they're booked for an hour. So they literally <laughs> would, could play it twice. Yeah. So, so you fill your set with covers and you have a cover yeah. for the encore because you want the fans to feel familiar mm. with something. So yeah, yeah, yeah. we would do like John Martin. We would do like, we did a craft work cover of the model. We would do, oh, we had a bunch of covers in our arsenal in those early days, mm. just, just wheel them out and. Mm. We do a remix for someone, right? We'll do a cover of that. Well, oh, well, there's there's a current song over there. Let's do a cover of that. I mean, it, nothing was off the table at that point. So mm. yeah, we used to do quite a lot of covers on the first first yeah. couple of tours. It's funny you mentioned the model because the band who are on the mixtape radio show tonight, they picked Big Black, Steve Albini's band. They did a cover of the model, and that was their that was their cover version. That's mad. You just nice, mentioned. Nice. Cover. I wanted to talk to you very quickly as well before we drop into the mixtape tracks about Warm Shadow and it featuring, I, I heard it in, in The Walking Dead a few years nice. back. And I know it's recently been in True Detective to two of my favorite yeah. TV shows. Like for anyone who's not familiar with Warm Shadow, when I listen to it, I think shit's going to go down here. Something bad's going to happen here. Like it's just exactly. got that atmosphere and sort of vibe about it. Do you know what I mean? Like I'm looking over my shoulder for zombies and shit every time I hear it. Yeah. How does that come about? Like did, did I approach you? We've, we've, you know, we've asked him for permission or, and, and that, do you get a buzz out of that when you, when you watch TV show? I know you're a fan of True Detective yourself. Um, so yeah, man. Be... I mean, I'm a, you know, when you're not a fan of the show, it doesn't matter. So, you know, it's just a simple, they send you a, they send you a brief. Are, are you okay with it? it? So-and-so is talking to so-and-so in a bar and they reveal that so-and-so once met mm -hmm. so-and-so and you kind of go, yeah, man, that's fine. You know, how much? Yeah, fine do it yeah. but walking dead was a real journey because they they had this mega scene this massive mm. pivotal crossroads in the season type of a moment mm. and it was a massive like eight minute license they wanted and it's a big thing so they sort of said would you have a problem if we get someone to cover warm shadow for, uh, and because and i'm like i was a bit like well, why don't you just use mine? But I thought, well, you know what? It's a big license. It's a, it, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, I, as long as it's not rubbish, you know, I'll be all right with that. Yeah. And they were talking about Bonnie Ver. So Bonnie Ver did a cover of it with oh, Colin my. Stetson, right? Mm -hmm. 
right? I'd love to hear that. It's out there. You can find oh, it. Is it? Oh. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. Yeah. You know, it's mm. Bonnie Ver. It's brilliant. Mm. And, and and it ended up not using that and then said, oh, actually, maybe sheepishly, oh, actually, we, 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 can we use yours instead? And, and I'm like, yeah, you can use mine. That's fine. You know? And so when they used it, they because I wasn't watching Walking Dead, I didn't the synopsis I didn't really care about when they sort of said so and so meet so and so and they discuss and I'm mm. like, yeah, whatever. But in the in the in fast forward a few years, I got a license on a on a series called Better Call Saul that mm, yeah, I was yeah, utterly yeah. riveted to at that mm. point. And of course, this episode hasn't aired yet. It's like five episodes ahead of me. And, and I got the call in saying, Oh, Finn, you know, I think we might have a track on Better Call Saul. And I'm like, You've got to redact the synopsis because I don't want to know. I don't. You can't give me any detail because then I'll mm. it'll blow the whole series. So mm. I got the I got the synopsis through blacked out like some FBI report <laughs> thing like yeah. blank is blanking blank and then blank <laughs> blank. Yep, yeah, great. I love it. Yeah, there's, love there's, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The um, great man. They they act as radio mm. for me. I don't really get mm. yeah, yeah. Main radio. I also don't get Triple J. So I don't yeah, get right, okay. radio yeah, yeah, yeah. radio this yeah. job either. So the sync kind of get me into people's get me into people's mm. ears in a different way. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. It's, it's like it's been amazing for me in America because it means I can yeah. I can tour America without needing a radio hit, which is quite mm. a rare yeah. a rare vibe. And and, yeah. I, and I really yeah. like that. But I mean I haven't seen the True Detective season four yet, but I've seen the scene. But I've got one episode. Left. I've got one episode left. I've got one, I've got to watch the last one. But yeah, it's oh, very good. Yeah, it's very good. I do love that series. I mean, yeah. yeah, I get a lot of I get a lot of licenses on 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 series that I don't I don't watch. I don't have a TV, so I don't really oh, watch okay. a lot of series. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. and Walking Dead, I stopped watching because it was just so relentlessly depressing. I thought there's no happy ending here. <laughs> like when it's there still was going. Hint, there's about three uh, offshoots. I mean, you know what I mean? I, mean, well. I don't bother with them. Yeah, yeah. There was a little hint there where they were going to find a magic pill, or they they were going to find a, a cure, and then it was turned out to be rubbish. And I'm like. Mm. I can't invest any more time in this. It's just, there's no Same. happy endings. Everyone's going to die and be killed by a zombie at some point. So yeah. I was, I was yeah. out. Sinks are away. If you're a young band, they can mm. dig you out of a big hole. And they did, they, mm. they, uh, they dug us out of a hole. We had this track called, this is a, th this is the thing. Mm. And that got, and that was in 2007. And we were so in debt and so, so indentured to our record company at this point. And, and the sink dug us out of the hole, which was mm. great because mm. It's very easy for bands to to spend money trying to get bigger, and then you and it's not an immediate thing. It can take a couple of albums to get bigger, but yeah. but the debt is a, is a now thing, and yeah, I don't know, it's tough to tough to work for nothing. Even if you love it, even if you love it, you still have to pay rent. You still have to buy go to ASDA, and it was tough. And the, the licenses have have kept us kept us afloat in the early mm. days. Otherwise, we probably yeah. would have gone on. Yeah, no, absolutely. I remember hearing an interview with David Gray and he was talking about recording White Ladder and he was saying, like, literally, we were arguing about whether we're going to buy this lead or not, whether we had enough money. Right. But like, while he was recording White Ladder, they were so sort of tight financially. And then, obviously, you know, he put the album out and, you know. It doesn't matter. That was it. Like, yeah, 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 that's it, that's it. Okay, Finn, let's move into your mixtape choices, mate. Yeah, okay. So for track one, whenever I make up a mixtape or a playlist or even... Like tonight when I when I do the radio show, track one's always a mm. bit of an attention grabber, something to to kick it off in fine style. And for your track one, you chose a Radiohead track. Of course. Yes. I mean, I could have chosen six Radiohead tracks for mm. this mixtape, but that's just because I'm a bit of a fanboy right now. Yeah. I chose a track called Idiotech for mm. a number of reasons. One, it's wide open, super inclusive track. It's it's electro, it's electronica, it's indie, it's rock, it's everything in one track. And two, that's got really it it, it opens your ears straight away to a kind of uh, a middle path between all of these genres. And mm. I remember playing that on White Label when I was a DJ, and I open I opened this club called Ninety Three Feet East in in Hoxton. Um, in london and i played it there and so and and it blew and it was really interesting because i was playing an indie band at a club night which back in the late 90s was not that not mm. that common very risky thing to do and that's where my love of radiohead began was in a way with this track sort of interpreting it as an electronic track whereas really it's mm. just i don't know i i dare you to not like it it's no, very it's, difficult not to like i think that it's track. 
it's a good that's not like i think a lot of people when that album came out there was so much expectation but like how are they going to yeah. follow up okay computer because it was such a an opus and, and it was only just like an opus it was it had like you know the karma police and you know the singles on it as well were massive yeah. and yeah. and it is not really it doesn't really have like you know singles that on it but that that track is like that's i think i hate the phrase but it's the most accessible track i think on the album it's a great one for the treadmill it's a track that it's it's okay for 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 people who are into electronic music to like and it's okay for people who are in who are into indie to like it, it just yeah it brings people together i think that way and it's, it's a great track exactly for that. Yeah. it brings yeah. people together and you know the, the Radiohead taught everybody, you know, how do you follow up a massive record? You don't. That's the answer. Don't. Don't even bother trying. You make yeah, the, yeah. Either you make the same record again, which is going to disappoint mm. everyone, including yourself, mm. or you don't, which is great. And and you might disappoint a few fans that want you to make the same record, but it doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, you sh yeah. you're, only, you make, you're making records for yourself. If you stop doing that, then you're an employee all of a sudden, yeah. you know. Yeah. But as long as you're making records for yourself, you're the boss, and, and that's a exactly better place right. to be. For sure, for sure. And track two, Finn, is a song yes. that you sing when you're on your own in the car or the shower. Okay. And you chose, yeah, you chose the great, the great Smiths. Ah, great. I chose Panic. Yes. yes you did, yeah, yeah, yeah. I choose Panic. I should put that on a T-shirt, really. I choose Panic because I think morrissey is 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 is, is so underrated, you know, as a as a lyricist, as a poet as a writer, as a, as, a, as a cultural moment in himself, as a human cultural exhibit, I think he's incredibly underrated. And yes, you know, just like, just like a lot of people um, who are very complicated, they also have complicated political views that are difficult to, difficult to deal with in the modern world where every view is known. Yeah. And, but, you know, moving that aside and just taking him on his art, anyone that listened to the Smiths at the time was aware that, that this was music the likes of which they've never heard before and it's music that's impossible to copy and we've we've never had another smiths no. so in that in that regard i think i think the smiths even though they are worshipped we, we we even though the smiths are worshipped by us and a lot of other people they're not worshipped by enough people in my opinion there should be a there should be a statue of them in Manchester. Well, there might be actually. I don't know. So I chose Panic because he's because Morrissey is is talking about how the radio DJs at the time were playing music that said nothing about his life. And That's I found my favorite that really, lyric. That's my favorite brilliant. lyric. I was, yeah. I was like a radio listener at that time myself, and I had the same feeling that Morrissey was having. And so I had this moment with Panic where the, 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 the musician was talking directly to me about my experience of listening to the radio while listening to the radio, listening to his track. It was such a meta experience that yeah. my mind was blown a thousand times. And, and, mm. and I also love the fact that he name checks, you know, Birmingham and, you know, places that aren't London. On the and, side. You know, hang the DJ. Absolutely. Yeah. Why not? You know? Yeah. Um, yeah, I just think it's an absolute masterpiece. And Johnny Marr sounds amazing and the band sound great. And it's yeah. just like a kind of, I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Johnny, Johnny Marr is my dream guest. If I could pick anyone, he's, he's the one I would love to get right. him on one day. One day I will, one day I'll, I'll get there. Okay. Well, um, just, Morrissey... just talk about guitars. Right. Okay. Yeah. Duly noted. I remember that. Thanks. Morris, Morris is not that popular in Perth at the moment because he came well, we didn't come. He had a show booked in December, just gone and sold out within minutes. It was only a small theater show. And, and he can on the day he canned it. Um, and like people of Perth, like it's not like a London show or a Manchester show or an LA we'll see show. see him again next year or something. Yeah. No, nah, nah, it's going to be years. It's going to be years. So yeah, there was, a, I, I personally wasn't quick enough to get tickets. So I wasn't as disappointed as everyone else, but yeah, I've, I remember like a week, a week or so after. I went out in this T-shirt and I just got dogs abuse from like two or three people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what are you wearing this T-shirt for? What are you Morrissey? Oh, oh, but listen, yeah. listen, you know, the Smiths isn't Morrissey, you know? Exactly Morrissey right. is yeah, not yeah, the Smiths. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's... I can separate the man and like you say, and his political views and, and everything else from, from the music and the art. Like I find it quite easy to do that. I don't associate, yeah. you know, and I think, I think the NME have been after him for like, dawn of time 
Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The bad press and you know, yeah, he only well, he's only got done, you know. Said some, he said some. He said some really you know controversial things and. You know he's got opinions. I mean, come on, Morrissey has opinions. Is not a news story. He's Morrissey. He's he's had opinions. He, he, if anyone that saw him on TV in the eighties, you know, be ready. He's going to say something that's going to shock someone. There's no question yeah, about yeah. that. And you know, but he's also he's also a very early advocate for vegetarianism and a very yeah, early advocate sure. for yeah. conservationism. And and some of the good stuff is lost in in some of the other stuff, which are opinions. He's 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 entitled to have whatever opinion he wants. He's just. Yeah. Don't don't be surprised if you voice them in public and people don't like you for it. Just be prepared for that. And I think yeah. Morrissey, there is a strain to him. The only weakness to him, his superhero artistry, is this almost like an inherent need to be loved or, or, or a desire to be liked. He covets your adoration a little bit. You can feel it in the Smiths. You can feel it in his in, in, in his own stuff. And that's that's his Achilles heel. And I think that's kind of really revealing. And it almost makes you love the Smiths even more because you know it's bravado, but it's not real. So, For sure. You know, I yeah, did hold Smith, out. But... I did used to hold out hope that one day they might get back together back in the day. Never going to happen. I, I, read his, <laughs> I read his book. I read his book and I was like, nah, that's an that's never going to happen, man. Not in a million years. That's not going to happen. I mean, I'm sure that I'm sure the other boys wouldn't mind, but Johnny Marr and Morrissey, that they, they both have enough money, they don't have to, yeah, so they're sure. not going yeah. to. I don't think ever. If they if oh. they did reform, I would definitely go. That would, yeah, that would be the biggest ticket in many a year. That would yeah, see off Taylor sure. Swift ticket prices for sure. <laughs> <laughs> definitely an older audience, but yeah, okay. <laughs> track three, Finn, is your favourite cover version, and you pick James Blake track. Yeah, I mean, it's not my favorite cover version, but it's definitely like if I had to pick a cover version for a mixtape, then mm -hmm. Limit to Your Love. This is what I love about cover versions is often I don't know they're a cover version. I didn't know that Jose's Heart's Heartbeats was a cover version. That, that, oh, that, that, that was yeah. yeah. Um, and I didn't know. Often I'll hear, a, I'll hear a, a, a cover version without knowing it and love it. And then I'll hear the original. And often you prefer the original or if you have a relationship with the new one you prefer the new one or whatever but limit to your love by james blake because i think it it takes the feist original version which is lovely and there's and it's brilliant and it's really brilliant but it just gives it something extra special and it, it really is a moment from james blake i mean he i could have chosen his cover of case of you which was so into his Joni mitchell cover which was so fantastic i had to actually stop the car when i was listening to that in driving around because i'm like I'm I'm thinking thoughts like this is better than the original, which you should never think about. Johnny Mitchell, Mitchell. He was struck yeah. down by the musical gods for even thinking that. But limit to your love, James Blake. I mean, you know, he's more than a cut. He's he's not a covers band, but when he does tackle a cover in his own mm -hmm. style, it's just a man who's very much at peace with his own his own vibe mm -hmm. and he's not fighting it he's doing it him on the piano singing the way he sings and then he sticks some mm -hmm. sub bass in there and it's just that his project his productions back then were so great mm -hmm. and 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 it's been copied ever since like crazy obviously you know and and yeah it's just it's just a, a completely brilliant reinterpretation of a track by feist who's also completely brilliant yeah i only found out talking about covers that you didn't know were covers i only found out literally a month ago that it must be loved by madness is a cover. I had no is idea. It? Yeah, Labby Sifri did, did the original. Yeah, Labby Sifri did the original. Oh, yeah. well, good for Labby <laughs> Sifri then. That, that, that's yeah. nice for him. That's good. Yeah, yeah. But there, like you say, madness of like you know when you when you make it your own that much, you know you you got no idea. Yeah, I only found out about yeah a month six weeks ago. I was like that blew my mind. Absolutely, wow, that's crazy. I've been man. listening to that song for thirty odd years. No idea yeah. it was a cover version. Yeah, fantastic well, well. track. Okay, and track four, Finn, is a song you wish you could play to your 18-year-old self. And this, is, this was really tricky, this one, because yeah, okay. I, this is how I interpreted this one, because mm -hmm. it's such a brilliant setup, that question. Mm -hmm. I interpreted it as, what would you play your 18-year-old self to kind of say, look at what is possible when it comes to making music that you didn't really think was possible when you're 18. Yeah. And I'll, I'll, I'll expand that when you tell us what, what the decision was. Mm. So what, what was the track? Oh, sorry. It was James Holden. Trust your feet. Oh yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So this is obscure. Okay. I could have chosen like, you know, fix you or something or, or, you know, I don't know some, 
or skinny love or something like that. Mm. But if, if I'd have played that to my 18 year old self, I would have said what my 18 year old self believed at that point, mm. which was the band is dead. The song is dead. The chorus is dead. Why would you listen to the same format of music that your parents listen to? It's not the 50s and I don't listen to the Beatles. I listen to Orbital and Aphex Twin. And, and, and the, in the future, we don't have press shots. You know, uh, we have synthesizers. It was like taking craft work to its rave conclusion. Yeah. And, I, and I considered it a political artistic revolution and I was on the vanguard of it. <laughs> so don't play me skinny love because I'd have been like, dude, that sounds like, you know, <laughs> Sounds like John Lennon, yeah. who cares? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I chose James Holden, which is pretty obscure, to be fair, to mm. maybe to a lot of your listeners. But mm. um, he's a dance guy, but he's more than that. Because and when I was 18, I was sampling and I was making dance music. And I was obsessed with the Orb and Orbital and these early rave techno outfits. Mm. And, and we had very limited equipment and no technology, no smartphones, no internet, no laptops. Mm. And it was very much you have to you, you have to make you have to make it yourself. And some of that's making the gear yourself. Mm -hmm. And this James Holden track is it sums up every emotion from those days for me. And if I it's 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 ravey, it's old school, it's now it's futuristic. It's almost taking everything that dance music was in its inception mm -hmm. and making it everything that it is now and giving you a template for the future at the same time. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like a it's almost like that this 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 track of this album that it's from that only came out last year is like a study in dance music for p people of a certain age as in my age and <laughs> i would love to play this track to my 18 year old self to say <laughs> i know you think it's all about the bass and the snare mm. and the and the hi hat but listen what, what what you could do if you think music if you think mm. dance and music and you put them together you could make this Mm -hmm. so how exciting is that going to be in the future oh, yeah you know, yeah that'd be lovely and i don't yeah. think my 18 year old self would have believed that making this track would have been in any in any way possible mm -hmm. in 1990 but mm -hmm. when i heard this track i was very emotional last year because it did feel like it was written for me as a study in how mm -hmm. i feel about dance music so yeah mm -hmm. awesome so what would that with that track choice, Finney, it kind of it, it gets answered in, in one of two ways. Not like the way you answered there. I might, there's an Australian band called The Church. I'm not sure if you're familiar with them. And the singer, Steve Kilby, he was episode one of the podcast. And, and he chose a Sigur Ross track because oh, right. he wanted to. He was very much a 4-4, four, four, baby, baby rock and roll that was what he was listening to when he was when he was that age and he, it was like similar to you he wanted to show himself musically what the possibilities were going to be sort of in the future and then yeah. there's another way of looking at it where it's more lyrically like Clint Boone chose Letter to Myself by the Lottery Winners because it's like it's like life advice lyrical yeah. sort of life advice to your 18 year old self and that's this generally the two ways that people look at that that question your 18 year old self isn't going to listen to any of that advice. That's the problem. <laughs> it's better to, it's better to say, yeah, you're going to do all that stuff this weekend. Anyway, here's a track that will enhance that and make you think a little bit harder about it than say, here's a song about how as an adult, I know more than you. Yeah, Cause as a yeah. teenager, yeah. I didn't, I didn't listen to, I didn't listen to anyone. No, Same. I was, I knew everything by the time I was 18, everything yeah. there is to know. I already knew at that age. And and yet, looking back, I know that I knew absolutely bugger all. But yeah, I don't know. That's the joy We're of using. Yeah, that's, 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 that's it, mate. That is it. Yeah. Track five, Finn, is a song you would put on your mixtape to let the listener know you are romantically interested in them. Something we've all in done. I've done it plenty of times with a with a mixtape. Yeah, you want you want to make one up and you know let someone know. And you chose the the Horace Andy track. Yeah. You are my angel. Mm -hmm. I mean, I could have chosen all manner of tracks because I've made all manner of these mixtapes over the years. Back then, I absolutely did. In fact, my wife, I made her a mixtape when we met. Mm -hmm. but it was on CD, of course, at that point. But and I could have there was a track on there by Lamont Dozier that I nearly chose. But actually, now it would be this Horace Andy track, You Are My Angel, because I love reggae. I'm a big reggae fan and I own a lot of reggae and and I consider it a very holy musical spots very un uncorrupted and and very true to itself which is extremely rare 
in any genre of art the minute it pops its head above the trenches so and you are my angel just is just horace andy sounding really great absolutely savage bass line just giving you sexy vibes and mm -hmm. his voice just says baby you know it's it's romantic but it's also fun and masculine but also vulnerable and that's why that's yeah. why i love it yeah i like that that question as well because like i've had like someone chose submission by the sex pistols once for that <laughs> nice for that, for that track and then you get like who did i have and sometimes it's more subtle sometimes it's more like sort of you know over like Barry Danita, White Spark, Danita Sparks from L7 chose Shoot by Salt and Pepper, which is like as right. out there as it, as it possibly could be. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> it's one of my favorite questions to ask that because you get a, a real insight one. into into the into how the person sort of works. Yeah, yeah, no, true that. Track six spin is something a little bit left field or obscure. Maybe you think doesn't get the the sort of kudos it deserves, and you chose yeah. Mentrix. That's right, my enemy, my love. Title track from her debut album came out in twenty. <laughs> 2019 or 20 no it came out 2020 yeah mention is amazing i just did a soundtrack with her as well for ubisoft mm. she's really great and this and this this why i chose this one as the as underrated was because she put this Mentrix album out on her own label in march 2020 which was the worst month in the history of music in the history yeah. of music to yeah. put a record out because of covid yeah. all the shops were shut yeah. and everyone was at home panicking and that was yeah. the end of that and this track, what I really, really love about it, apart from the fact that it's challenging and I, and, and, and we're both big fans of the creatures and Susie, Susie and the Banshees and, and people like that. We love that, that the vibes that Budgie, the drummer gets with the slits and people like that. It was the fact that she brings into it her Sufi background where the track actually speeds up. And so it, you, you, it's not to a click, it's all done analog, mm. but it's a, it's a, it's called a Zekra and it just kind of starts slowly and gets faster and faster and faster and faster. And by the end, you're just in a kind of trance mm. and then it explodes and then you're done. Mm. And, and that I find very challenging and very interesting. And I don't think I've heard another track like it, uh, like ever in pop music. Mm. So yeah, I think it's really underrated. So yeah, she, Mentrix should get more more props and the videos are crazy you should check them out yeah i did i was like when we first started talking when i hit the record button i was i had to turn it off because i was listening i was watching one of the youtube videos yeah amazing artist yeah fantastic and i noticed as well because i was you know i'm a professional i was doing a bit of research she sung on <laughs> she sung on hard believer as well is that right well she kind of wrote a bit of looking too closely that's, uh, that's the one mate but she's really underrated and I love the way that she thinks about music and art. She, she, she doesn't go for like, I'm going to do five albums in five years. She'll do like, I'm going to do two videos this year. That's what I'm going to do. And they're both going to be really great. That's, that's the gig. And then I'll do a, I'll do an album when I'm ready to do an album. And I, I think that's, I think that's really, 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 really awesome. It's a different way of looking at it. And it's a different way of being an artist than just write the songs and, and bang them out and do the yeah. tours, which yeah. is my, which is my route, which is my way. But yeah my enemy my love it's brilliant check the album it's it's it's, it's brilliant yeah i love it even Absolutely. though to be full disclosure i produced it sorry about that but you know uh, that's all right mate it's all right give it a plug no worries no worries it's um, not giving it a plug i, I meant everything i said earlier yeah, I, no, I, for I, sure. I would i would believe it even if i hadn't produced it but i did i i did yeah. full disclosure i did actually produce that that track right. but you know cool it's all good mate it's all good so nice. future plans, Finn, you've just announced your, your new record. Can you tell us yes. um, a little bit about that and, you know, maybe some, maybe track titles or album title and where we can get that, any sort of vinyl formats we can, yeah. we can expect? Yeah, man, as always in the modern age, we've over formatted, of course, there's like 9,000 different, different versions you can, you can spend your money on, but yeah, we recorded it, went right back to basics, wrote 10 beautiful songs, very folky, went back to Cornwall where I was born, where I'm from, where my family is, rented a chapel from Sam, who's uh, the Beatles guy and, and in his studio and, and I spent a month, went swimming in the sea every morning even though it was October and, <laughs> and, you know, recorded a really beautifully honest, true, like think record. Cause after the hard believer, the perfect darkness, hard believer albums, which were big in the, in the mid, in the mid teens, I went on a very artistic wonder, which I'm very proud of, but, but maybe I was losing sight of the song a little bit and, and getting into other things. So 
it is definitely I'm back to that and it's it's very grounded and very and very real and because I recorded it where I was born it just felt really like coming back to my roots and it's very rootsy record and it's called Beauty in Your Wake as which is the first song I wrote for the record which was all about that's the most important thing you can leave behind is just mm. a bit of grace you know you don't have to leave anything solid behind you know like like they used to in the past it's much more it's much more esoteric than that. And it's just the three of us trio. So we, when we locked in, we didn't have any guests or any sessions or any, if we wanted strings, we had to play them. If we wanted cellos, we had to bow an acoustic guitar, mm -hmm. which we did all of that. And and it's awesome. We absolutely love it. So it's out in July and mm -hmm. you can order it. You can get it now from all your usual places. You can pre-order it from the mm -hmm. internet. There's like, yeah, fancy formats and different colorways and all that, all that rubbish. And it's on CD. And I think we're going to do a cassette as well. Oh, nice. Yeah, cassettes are starting to creep back in. I've noticed I'm that lately. A few people are putting I'm... cassettes out. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I'm down yeah. for it, man. I, I actually really dig cassettes now. So I, I, I that's why we're doing it on cassette because I want oh, one. Fantastic. For my, for my tape, yeah. My tapes, I'll, but, um, I'll definitely be grabbing one yeah. of those for sure. We're going to tour the shit out of the album. Yeah, for sure. We're going to, we're going to tour like crazy. It's, you know, obviously we're going to do our backyard first, which is a which is a shame for 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 everyone that isn't in our immediate backyard or even on the other side of the planet, like your good selves. But mm. we're trying to get down to Oz for next for like next March. We're trying. We'll let mm. you know. But if okay. if we do yeah. get down there, we're not. We, we won't just do Sydney and Melbourne because it's a long Please way. Please come to Perth. We'll definitely. Please do, come to Perth. The thing. There's, we <laughs> definitely want to do Canberra and Perth, and yeah. we really want. To, I really want to play Hobart. So yeah, right, to, okay, yeah. Tasmania is beautiful. I really want to play it. I want to play Wellington as well in New Zealand. I have never played over there. So, yeah. you know, it's 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 about bloody time I got mm. down there. It's been yeah. way too long. Like, put it this way. Last time I played in Australia, Mumford & Sons weren't famous yet. Wow. It's, that's a that. long time ago. That yeah, is a long time. Before, before I even came to live here. Yeah. You know, that's the, that's the whole Mumford & Sons arc from lion man to stadium to marrying hollywood to disappear to, yeah. to join with joni mitchell or something you know that whole yeah. thing happened since i've been there so wow. yeah. the last time i was there i did sydney festival and laura marling was playing oh, cool. and marcus yeah. marcus was the drummer in her band oh, and i remember right. i went up to him and i was like oh dude i'm really cool he's playing guitar and all and banjo and i'm like well, that's really cool and he's like, oh, yeah, I'm coming back, actually, with my other band in, uh, next week. And I'm like, oh, great, who's your other band? He's like, Mumford & Sons. And I'm like, oh, yeah, my friend Ben Howard is a big fan of you. You know, he thinks Mumford yeah. & Sons are going to be massive. And I don't get it, but I, 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 good luck. And then we get back to the we get to the hotel in Melbourne, and he's on MTV. And I'm like, dude, Mumford & Sons are going to be massive. <laughs> That's so, so cool. <laughs> fair enough. To do. I remember seeing him in Sydney. This is in, in January. It was meltingly hot, like absolutely mm. Actually melt meltingly hot and they're all in tweed and wool yeah yeah all, all decked out like victorian yeah. country yeah yeah, and yeah. Like, yeah i was in like this linen as you could get by that point i was you're off your rocker okay. mate yeah <laughs> <laughs> i was literally in like linen linen vest and linen shorts and just like dying yeah, but yeah. Um, yeah i love australia man and I I, yeah. I I can't believe i haven't been there for so long the world's a big place and i gotta get down i don't want to i don't want to give you a get out uh, thing, but if you didn't come to Perth, I would be I would be getting on a plane. There's not many artists that I would, but you are definitely oh, one of them. I would man. be flying across, but but don't let that you know. Make sure you come to Perth, mate. Ben Howard's coming to Perth. I think in May. I got tickets. Yeah, really, yeah, really, really, yeah. Really, 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 really looking forward to seeing him because I haven't seen him before. I'm a big fan of him. I got all his records, but I've He's never seen him live. His, his penknife, Rich, who plays with him. He's the guy that hooked us up with the studio in Cornwall. Oh, cool! Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're, we're quite close to that band. I love Ben; he's great. We toured a lot yeah, in the yeah, we yeah. in the in the in the in the noughties and together, and he's awesome. And his new, I love his new record. It really, it's really light and just what I needed actually at this yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like we mentioned earlier, Jose Gonzalez. We mentioned earlier, he was in Perth last week or the week before. I think he played two shows in Perth. Same venue as Ben Howard. So yeah, it's 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 a golden age at the moment in Perth for. The gigs. What, what, what everybody else doesn't know about what we do is that I need to get a visa to come to Australia to play. Mm. It's not like I can just rock up with my gear. Yeah. And that's that's not as easy as it used to be. No. And same with the states. I can't just go to the states and do a do a six week tour. I got a, I got to get in the queue for like a, a six months to get a visa now. It used to take like three weeks. Yeah. Right, post okay. post COVID yeah. American yeah, immigration. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Same yeah. with Australia. It's no joke. So mm. you're not going to go through all of that 
to just do Sydney, Melbourne, and then and then do and then do Joburg and Cape Town on the way home. <laughs> you, yeah, go, yeah. you go through all yeah. that hassle of getting the visa. You yeah. might as well turn it into a two week run and, have, and actually yeah. do yeah. it. Yeah, and you know, streaming has changed everything. It's it, the, the digital acceleration has has meant that this global village that we all thought we lived in has suddenly become an awful, it's more, more like a global Hamlet. Now we're all like in each other's pockets, like yeah. you know, straight yeah. away. And yeah. so I think the artists that, uh, you know, if you want to, if you like playing live, then Australia has got like six gigs you can do. So do it. Mm. Let's, let's mm. do six gigs, let's do six in Australia, two in New Zealand. And yeah. irrelevant of whether or not a festival pays the bills, just get down under and do it. So yeah. that's why yeah. I want to play Hobart and Perth and Canberra because it's yeah. like, yeah. you know, everybody plays the corner and everybody plays everybody plays Sydney and it's like, mm. you know, just if make that little bit of extra effort so your fans don't have to travel so much to see you. I think it's sure. a beautiful thing. Yeah, you know? Damien Rice, Damien Rice is coming soon and he's not playing Perth. He's but he's doing Tasmania and Canberra and he's doing like a few more out of the way places, but he's not coming to Perth. But I've seen him, I've seen him two or three times. So. I'm not overly fussed. I'm not getting on a plane for him, but yeah, I've never seen you live, Finn. So yeah, it's, that's, that's a disgrace. it's disgraceful, isn't it? I must. I know mean, he's that's, terrible. That's... Yeah, I never would have let you. I let you know that before you agreed to do the interview, but it's <laughs> in the bag. I can. I can let that one out of the bag. Listen, mate, <laughs> Finn, thanks so much for coming on the show. I really Pleasure. appreciate you being so generous with your time and the to and fro in with the with the organising and the times and everything. Really appreciate that's it, mate. Good. good luck with a new record. Hope it goes really well for you, mate. And I'll see you when you get down under. Lovely. Thanks a lot, man. I'll see no you problem. later. Cheers, buddy.